So just to stress, the two diamond opening an OCP uh, only deals with 4441 hands that are in the range of 16 to 23 points. If you've got less than 16, we open the hand with one diamond. And if you've got 24 or more, we still open it with one club. Otherwise, it's too wide a range for us to be able to cope with easily with the two diamond opening. Okay, so let's just go over that quickly. There are basically four different kinds of of responding hands that we we categorize um, firstly hands very weak hands in the naught to four point range with a six card or longer suit of their own and respond the bids two spades if they have one of those the next two actually start off responding exactly the same way and that's either 14 plus hands with any two suited hand that's at least 4-4 four, four. Uh, it can be more but it can't be less than 4-4 four, because four, then it wouldn't be a two suitor um, and we transfer into one of our suits that's normally the cheapest of the two suits uh, but I'll come back to that um, that point in a bit because it's not always. The next one is again a very weak hand that's in the 0 to 4 range that's either 4333 or any 5332 hand in which the doubleton is not immediately above the five card suit. In other words, if you had two spades and five hearts, that wouldn't count. But if you had three spades and five hearts, that would be okay. And the last variety of these is a not to four hand with any touching two suited hand that's at least four four. The connection between those hand types may not be immediately apparent to you, but I'll explain that again in a bit. So with either of those two hands, the 14 plus two suitor or the naught to four hand in one of those three categories, um, we generally transfer into the cheapest of our two suits. With the naught to four hands, it's always the cheapest of the two suits or into your long suit if it's a 4333 or a 5332 hand. With the 14 plus 2 suitor, responder has the option as to which one he transfers into. Okay, so that's two of the three or three of the four categories. And the last one is any other hand just responds two hearts, which is a, an artificial relay. So in practice, most of the time, responder ends up bidding two hearts. It's only if they have one of the first three that they do something different. Okay. Okay, so if if Responder bids the two heart relay. Opener now shows their range. So two spades shows any 16 to 19 4441. And the two no trump, three clubs, three diamonds, and three heart bids are all showing 20 to 23 points bidding the suit below the singleton. So we'll come back to those in a minute. Okay, so going back to our four hand types, uh, we'll start off with the two spade because that's one of the simplest ones.
Okay, so the two spade response shows any single suited hand with at least a six card suit, but in the naught to four range. In other words, this is a, a, a big warning immediately to opener. Um, and we may have a fit, but we may not have a fit. And, and we use this mainly because our experience is that when responder is very weak with a long suit, it's almost always better to play in their long suit, even if it's on a 6-1 or a 7-1 fit, than it is to play in one of the strong hand suits on, say, a 4-3 fit because we get a lot more use out of responders hand when we're playing in their long suit because we've got the 16 plus hand so we're going to take quite a few tricks with our high cards but we maximize the use that we're going to get out of responders hand if we play in one of our suits we may never get to responders hand at all okay so over two spades with any 16 to 19 point hand, opener bids two no trumps. And that basically just tells responder to bid their suit. However, if they're in the 20 to 23 point range, they use what we call Oliver's Twist at the three level. Um, I'll explain that more in a minute uh, for those that, that might need that. Okay, so we've mentioned the two heart automatic relay. Uh, we've mentioned the two spade bid, which is showing a very weak single suited hand, long suit. The only other responses that are permitted over the two diamond opening are two no trumps, three clubs, three diamonds and three hearts, which are all two way transfers. And they're either showing the naught to four hands with four three 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 five three three two or a touching two suitor, or a fourteen plus two suited hand. So both of those hand types transfer into their cheapest suit or one of their suits in the case of the fourteen plus hands. Okay, so let's. Uh, Let's look at those in a little bit more, more detail. But here's just a summary of what we've seen so far. We're going to look at all of that in a bit more detail in a minute. Okay. Okay, so if Responder makes the two heart relay, um, they don't have to have any points at all to do that, uh, and they're not promising any points. What Opener has to bear in mind is, is not only that, but the fact that we may not have a trump fit anywhere. It's possible that uh, Responder, for example, is 4333 with a four card suit in our single opposite our singleton so the best fit that we've got 
is a 4-3 fit. Of course, if responder is 0 to 4 with 4-3-3-3 distribution, we would expect them to transfer into their 4 card suit as part of that two-way tra that two-way transfer bid. Okay, so if Responder bids the two heart relay, two spades shows any 16 to 19 4441. Responder makes a further relay of two no trumps and now opener bids the suit below their singleton. After that, absolutely every continuation is natural and non forcing with the sole exception of an immediate bid of opener's singleton suit, which OCP would normally use as a beta ask, a general control ask, but if you haven't got asking bids under your belt yet, you could use that as Roman key card or just as Blackwood, since you haven't agreed a trump suit. But either way, whether responder just bids one of openers four card suits or whether they bid the singleton suit or bid no trumps responder is totally in control um, of where we end up playing and even if they use the ace ask they have to decide the final contract once opener shows where their singleton is because like I said Responder doesn't have to have any points here and they don't have to have we don't have to have a fit Okay Okay, so over two hearts two no trumps three clubs three diamonds and three hearts as I said before, all show 20 to 23 points and we're bidding the suit below our singleton now. So the 2 no trump rebid by opener shows a club singleton, three clubs would show a diamond singleton, three diamonds would show a heart singleton and three hearts would show a spade singleton. And there is no way that opener can bid anything other than two spades, two no trumps, three clubs, three diamonds or three hearts over that two heart relay. And even though opener is now showing 20 to 23 points, again, all continuations are strictly natural and non-forcing, except for an immediate bid in the singleton suit. Because even though opener is 20 to 23, as I said, responder doesn't have to have a single point in their hand here. Um, and as before there's no guarantee that we've got a fit anywhere so usually we just accept the cheapest if if responders very weak uh, accepts the cheapest um, playable fit that we can find because by this point openers distribution is an open book so responder is exactly and totally in control of the bidding Okay, let's have a look at an example of this. So North's got a nice 18 count. They've opened two diamonds. South's got a nice hand here, a nice 11 count. 
and two suited hand, but they're not 14 plus, and they're too strong otherwise. So they just bid the two heart relay. Okay, so we're going to assume now that we're not using asking bids. So that may seem a little bit like a punt by South, um, and essentially it is, but if you're not using the asking bids, then South has to decide the final contract. He could bid five spades, which is obviously invitational, but with a known nine card fit um, and not too much wastage in diamonds, six spades should have a reasonable chance here. Any questions? Just give you another example here. So this time, Easter's got 20 to 23 points. So they immediately bid the suit below their singleton at the three level. So they bid three hearts to show a spade singleton. So again, these are just step responses over the three spade ask. Um, so Wes can tell that there's two aces missing. So even though they've got uh, a nice 12 count, um, clearly slam is out of reach here. Um, we've got no decent fit.
So, as before, West here just has to decide the final contract. They can ask about aces or make a control asking bit of beta before they do that, but they have to set the final contract afterwards, unless it's obviously invitational, like that five spade bid might have been on the previous hand. Any questions? So two diamonds, two hearts is, is actually the simplest of them all, really. Um, because we always end up essentially with responder making all the decisions um, because their hands completely an unknown quantity whereas openers is known within a, a smaller point range and their distribution ends up being known exactly so we just leave it totally up to responder Okay. So like I said, our experience is that normally it's best to play in um, responders long suit in these circumstances uh, even if we can find a 4-3 fit with one of our strong suits it's better to play in responders long suit um, there may be a few exceptions to that but most of the time you get a lot more use out of responders hand if you play in their long suit rather than ours and that goes right through with other hands as well Okay, so if responders in the sorry, if openers in the 16 to 19 range and responder bids two spades over two diamonds, opener simply bids two no trumps and responder now bids their long suit. Normally, opener will pass that, especially if it's hit their singleton, they'll definitely pass that, but with if they've got 18 to 19 and responder has hit one of their four card suits um, they do have the option to bid game or to invite game but they have to bear in mind that responder may have nothing but if they've got really good controls um, they have that option to bid game in the major or to invite game in the minor they wouldn't normally bid game in the minor. They would just invite it at the four level and then leave it up to responder as to whether to go or not. But either way, continuations are, are completely natural and non-forcing. We're certainly not going to be looking for a slam here. So there's no question of cue bidding or anything else. Okay, with is there anybody here who's who's not come across Oliver's twist before? I don't want to waste time explaining it if everybody knows what I mean. Okay, so if uh opener is upper range 20 to 23 they bid their singleton at the three level over two spades if this hits responders uh, long suit sorry I've said responders singleton there it's if this hits responders suit 
they will usually pass. But they do have the option of um, raising to the four level if their maximum for their naught to four, bearing in mind that opener is 20 to 23. But it's normally if they've got a self-sufficient seven card suit, i.e. something like Queen Jack 10, 9, XXX, um, whereby we don't need to be leading towards our suit to try and get the maximum number of tricks. We can just lead it from our own hand. And where um, the number of likely losers in the suit is a known quantity right from the word go. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that with, say, King Jack 9 XXXX. I wouldn't raise to gain. But Queen Jack 10 9 XXX, I probably would. Because there probably won't be many losers outside the trump suit if we've got a seven card suit. Um, and if we've got probably a maximum of two losers in the trump suit, especially in a major, then uh, games are uh, a reasonably good proposition. Just bear with me a minute, guys. It's all right. Okay, sorry about that. Um, okay, so if if Opener uses Oliver's Twist by bidding their shortage at the three level rather than bidding two no trumps, if if we've hit openers, uh, responders long suit, they will normally pass. If, however, we haven't hit uh, we haven't hit their long suit, we've bid something else, then clearly we've got a four card fit with responder. So we've got at least a ten card fit in their trump suit. So in those circumstances, responder simply bids their suit at whatever level they have to. We'll normally end up in game if it's a major suit, or at least inviting game if it's a minor. But even if responder has the option of bidding at the three level, of showing their suit at the three level over Oliver's twist, they've got the option of bidding four in the knowledge that we've got the 10 card fit and that opener is upper range. So if they've got about a four count, um, we would want to be in game regardless. So all the continuations are natural and non-forcing, but uh, responder shouldn't be slow to bid game if that seems reasonable. So here's an example of that.
so here west hasn't hit uh, opener singleton so east knows that we've got a nice really good diamond fit we've got superb controls outside even though we're still in that 16 to 19 range and even an opening lead in spades isn't going to embarrass us so there's a good chance of us being able to avoid more than one loser outside diamonds so it's perfectly okay for East to invite here and West is is upper range for their naught to four and they've got seven card diamonds so they give it a chance Any questions? Okay. Okay, so we've dealt with the really easy ones, which are the two heart and two spade responses. Um, now things are a little bit more complicated. So the responses over two diamonds from two no trumps up to and including three hearts are all these two-way transfers that are either naught to four or 14 plus. Um, obviously most of the time they're going to be naught to four uh, but we do get the 14 plus hands surprisingly regularly. And if you were wondering about why the mix of possibilities with the naught to forehand was as they are, we're going to be transferring into our four card suit if we're four three 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 or our five card suit if we're five three three two and into our cheapest suit if we've got a four four plus two suitor. Touching two suitor. And the reason why, particularly with the 5332 hand, that we must have a three card suit immediately above our five card suit is this. These are all transfers. And what's going to happen is that opener will bid the transfer suit if they've got a four card holding in that suit but they're going to bid the next suit up if the transfer hits their singleton. And either way, with the naught to four hand, responder will almost always pass whatever opener bids over the transfer. So whether they complete the transfer or they skip the transfer suit and bid the next suit up, responder pretty much has to pass. Because they're naught to four and opener doesn't have to have more than 16 points. So we're not even sure that we've got the balance of the points here. So if responder is 0 to 4, um, we're just going to 
take the cheapest fit that we can get. Any questions so far? Okay, the other part of this is that this transfer might be showing a 14 plus hand with any two suited hand and it can be any suits touching or otherwise. But obviously opener doesn't know whether responder is 0 to 4 or 14 plus so they're basically going to bid exactly the same way. They're going to bid the transfer suit if they've got a four card holding in it and skip that suit and bid the next suit up if they haven't. Quick example of that. So here in that first example, Responder's got two spades, three hearts, five diamonds, three clubs, and a three count. So over two diamonds, they bid three clubs, which is a transfer to diamonds. If opener bids three diamonds, showing four card diamonds, then they pass. If opener bids three hearts, showing a singleton diamond, they must have four card hearts. We know that we haven't got any eight card fit anywhere so we just pass three hearts because we take the cheapest seven card fit that we can and that's why with the five three three two shape hands responder mustn't have a doubleton immediately above the five card suit because if the transfer hits open a singleton they're going to bid our doubleton suit but we're forced to pass it and now we're in a 4-2 two, two, two fit which is not good. With 4-3-3-3 three, 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 it doesn't matter because if the four card suit hits open a singleton any other holding is going to be a 4-3 fit. If we've got a 0-4 touching two suitor then if opener skips the transfer suit we've arrived in a 4-4 fit but again we might be 0-4 opposite a 16 count so we're just going to take the cheapest um, the cheapest fit that we can it's possible that there are going to be times when we may miss a game um, if it turns out that opener's got a 23 count. But in that sense, there's not much we can do about that. We have to cater for the normal things. Opener will have a 16 count far more often than they're going to have a 23 count. Any questions so far? In theory, I suppose, if uh, if Responder's got a four count and quite a big two-suited hand, they could potentially start raising whatever suit opener bids if you're not using asking bids. They can't really do it if we are using asking bids. Um, but if you're not using asking bids, you could raise it um, just as an invitation. You know, if you were, say, 6-5 with 0 to 4 points, um, then you could start raising it. But to be honest with you, if you are, if you've got that kind of a distributional two-suiter, even with 0 to 4, you're probably better off upgrading your hand and just bidding two hearts initially 
over two diamonds rather than the transfer and then you're in control and you can decide where to go so I wouldn't recommend um, Respondo starting to raise the suit if only because once you start using asking bids it's not an option So those are relatively easy because essentially having made the transfer with 0 to 4, we're just going to pass whatever opener bids. Yes, of course you can. Of course you can, Ali. I, t I take it you're still talking about the naught to four hands. Okay. If you were, say, five to four, you know, you had a touching five, four, two suitor in the naught to four range, I would still just transfer into your cheapest suit and pass whatever opener bids. It's if you start getting to five, five, or uh six five that I would bid two hearts rather than transferring. Okay. What I mean by that is if if in that example that's shown there, okay, responders got jack to five diamonds and the suit immediately above diamonds is hearts and they've got three hearts to the queen. So Doing the two-way transfer on that hand is perfectly okay. But let's mentally swap around responders majors. And suppose they had queen to three spades and two small hearts. Now they shouldn't use the two-way transfer. Because if the three club transfer to diamonds hits open a singleton, they're going to bid three hearts, which is our doubleton now. But we're forced to pass. We can't bid three spades because that now shows a totally different hand. That shows a 14 plus hand. Do you understand, Ellie? You're always safe. The bottom line is that you are always safe using the two heart relay. If you're not sure, particularly. Because responder is totally in control if you use the two heart relay. They, they use the relay, opener shows their range, shows where their singleton suit is, and responder then decides where they want to play. If you use the two heart relay. It's more complicated if you use the two way transfer. Okay? So if you're not sure, bid two hearts. Because you're not promising anything. And you're in control. Okay. Okay, so most of the time if if we have these two-way transfers, it will be a naught to four hand. But the 14 plus hands do come up. Um so these are don't have to be a touching two suitor, but it must be at least four four, obviously. But it can be a lot more than that. The thing about fourteen plus hands is that fourteen plus two suited hand uh, opposite a sixteen to twenty three four 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 one 
were guaranteed at least one eight card fit, if not two eight card or better fit. Okay, so what we do is we normally transfer into the cheapest of our two suits, especially if we're even suited. But basically, responder decides which one they want to transfer into. So, for example, they might have a six card major and a four card minor, and now I would always start off transferring into the six card major. But it does end up, especially once you're um, using asking bids, that you can end up having quite an expensive sequence if you transfer into your higher ranking suit first or not the cheapest over two diamonds. So when I say you transfer into your cheapest suit, I mean the cheapest as a response over two diamonds. So if you had both majors, I would transfer into hearts if you had both majors every time. Even if it ends up that you end up playing in a 4-4 fit rather than a 5-4 fit, it's cheaper in the long run. Okay. But basically, Responder decides which one he wants to transfer into. So again, opener doesn't know whether responder is 0 to 4 or 14 plus. Um, so their response is exactly the same. They bid the transfer suit if they've got a four card suit there, and they bid the next suit up if responders hit their singleton. Okay, so we're going to start off with the situation when you're not using asking bids. If opener completed the transfer, then we know we've got an eight card fit there, and responder can just start Q bidding immediately. Okay, because they're tra they've transferred into one of their suits, and opener's shown a fit in the suit. So we don't need to confirm it, we can just start Q bidding, and, and responder ought to start Q bidding. It's not right just to bid gain or to pass if, if that transfer was at game level somehow. We've got at least, at least 30 high card points between the two hands and we've got a fit. So responder should start Q bidding, always. Okay, if opener bids the suit above the transfer suit, in other words, they've got a singleton in the transfer suit, now it's slightly different because responder, opener doesn't know what responder's second suit is. So responder has to confirm it or bid their suit if opener hasn't bid their second suit. So for the sake of example, um, let's give responder a major two suitor. So opener bids two diamonds, responder bids three diamonds transferring into their hearts, but opener's got a singleton heart and bids two spades, sorry, three spades over three diamonds. Okay, opener doesn't know that responder's got both majors, so they've all, the, th the three spade bid says is, I've got a singleton heart. So now responder just has to bid four spades, 
and leave it up to Opener to start the queue bidding. And they will, because we know now that Responder is 14 plus when they bid four spades. Okay. The situation is radically different once we start using asking bids, and I'll explain that a, a little bit in a minute. Okay, so if Responder completes the transfer, sorry, if Opener completes the transfer, Responder starts queue bidding. If Opener skips the transfer suit and bids the next suit, Responder has to bid their suit at the cheapest level, whether it's the suit that Opener bid or not, because Opener doesn't know what Responder's second suit is. And now, even if it means starting queue bidding at the five level, Opener will start queue bidding. Any questions so far? I'll take that as a no. Okay, just I, I'm not going to go over this in in big detail. We do revisit the two diamond opening later in the the teaching series uh, once we've dealt with the asking bids. Um, but if opener completes the transfer, then with 14 plus responder treats that as a gamma asking bid with a four card minimum length um sorry that forget that last bit that's wrong i wrote that and i forgot to take it out just bear me a second i'm just going to resend that because it's wrong Just bear with me. Okay, because particularly once asking bids are in the mix, um, responder can't start, doesn't have the option of raising at all. And to be honest with you, as I said before, really, they shouldn't do whatever happens. Um, if they're naught to four, they don't know that openers more than a 16 count. So we don't even know we've got the balance of the points. So raising to game is crazy. OK, so if Responder um, has 14 plus and opener bids the transfer suit, completes the transfer, then we treat this as a gamma ask. No, okay. Uh, sorry, I'm. Um. Bear with me. So I had a senior moment here. Again, scrap that last thing that I've sent, and this is what it should be. So Responder always passes with the 0 to 4 hand. But if Responder's 14 plus, they now bid their second suit. And if we've got asking bids in the mix, 
that's an eater ask. And typically, um, if it's available, they bid three no trumps to make an eater ask in the suit opener actually bid. So, for example, um, supposing it goes two diamonds, three clubs transfer to diamonds, and now opener bids three hearts to say that they've got a singleton diamond. So three spades from responder would be an eater ask in spades, and three no trumps would be an eater ask in hearts, i.e. the suit that opener actually bid, the suit above the transfer suit. Oh no, sorry. This I, I had a brainstorm earlier and uh I put these in and I And I meant to take them all out because I realised I was talking rubbish and then I forgot to do it. Sorry, just bear with me a second. I've just got to do some editing here. Okay, so if opener skips the transfer suit with 14 plus, responder simply bids their suit as an eater ask. And three no trumps if it's available um, as an ask in the suit that opener actually bid. But for example, so that time, responder transferred to diamonds, opener bid three diamonds, showing four card diamonds, and so four clubs is simply a gamma response. So that would be showing. Um, Oh, actually, no, that's wrong. Sorry, that would be showing two top honours, not one top honour in diamonds. Hang on a minute. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's showing... Two top honours with a five card suit in diamonds. Um, three diamonds, four clubs. Okay. Sorry about the confusion there, guys. Um, like I said, I had a senior moment when I was writing up the notes for this lesson earlier on and and clocked it and then forgot to change what I've written 
So we do come back to the asking bids uh, over two diamonds later in the series once we've once we've absorbed the asking bids. Um, in fact, we revisit half the system um, for the places where asking bids have entry points. Okay. I'll just show you a couple of examples of that. Okay, so here we have two diamond opening. <laughs> oh, I've had a tough week. Okay, so here South has skipped over the transfer suit of Hearts because they've got a Singleton Heart. But they don't know, so all this is saying is that they've got a Singleton Heart. It's obviously showing four card spades as well. So now North has to bid four spades to show that spades is their second suit. And this is promising a 14 plus hand. If North was not to four, they would just pass three spades if they had spades. Well, they, they must have spades. Whether they only had three spades or a four card suit or even a five card suit, they would pass three spades here with naught to four. So when the 14 plus, they have to bid four spades and leave it up to opener to start the queue bidding. Yes, John, if we were using asking bids, three no trumps would be eater in spades. It does get more complicated because obviously three no trumps isn't always available. But it's a space saving device when, uh, when it is available. OK, so five clubs was a cubid. North's going to cubit their diamond ace. Um, South hasn't got a singleton ace of hearts, so they've already shown the heart shortage. There's no need for them to show it again. So effectively now... Five spades is rolling. It's simply denying having the stiff ace of, of hearts. Five spades. In fact, North would probably bid six spades over five spades. Um, because we've basically we've covered the minor suits with five clubs and five diamonds. So if if South doesn't have uh, the stiff ace of hearts, then the possibility of a grand slam has gone. So North would probably just bid six spades over five spades.
Okay, any questions? So that was an example of one where openers skip the transfer suit. Here's Yes, it, mm, no, not really. I think um, if we're using asking bids, Paula, then then it would be a completely different sequence. What I'm talking about at the moment, we haven't dealt with the asking bids. So I'm showing you how the sequence would be without asking bids. Um, yes, I mean potentially a bid in in openers singles known singles and suit could be ace asking, but if you're in the middle of a Q bidding sequence, it would be dangerous. I wouldn't do that. Basically, if you wanted to ask for aces, then South would, would in that last hand, um, would probably have bid four no trumps over four spades as an ace ask, rather than starting a Q bidding sequence. Okay. Launching into ace asking in the singleton suit in the middle of a Q bidding sequence is dangerous because it's likely to be misunderstood. Okay. If we're using asking bids, then we'd have had an ETA or a Gamma ask at some point earlier, and we'd be in an asking bid sequence. So we wouldn't be Q bidding at all. Okay. All right, let's look at this one. Okay, so here, South's got six card hearts and four card diamonds. Um, so they could transfer into diamonds with three clubs, but in practice, they're going to try the six card major first because there's quite a big disparity. They'd much rather play in hearts if North has got four hearts. No need for a rolling four hearts here, since uh, North's got ace king of spades. It's obvious that South's got a shortage in spades. So the four spades is confirming that actually North has got first round control of the suit. Alternatively, South could bid Roman Keycard Blackwood with four no trumps at this point. So we're Q bidding to a fairly well here.
Yes, if we're using asking bids, th then it, the whole sequence is totally different, John. So we've we've covered all the bases with the asking with the Q bidding here. Oops, sorry. Um, forgot the pass. So here, five no trumps is a grand slam force. Just checking that South's got the king queen of hearts. Okay, I'm not going to go into how we would bid these with asking bids because we revisit all these hands and um, and we revisit two diamonds once we've got asking bids under our belt. Um, so we'll be looking at these hands again uh, with asking bid sequences rather than Q bidding and so on. Um, but at the moment, without asking bids, the main point is that if opener bids the transfer suit and responder is 14 plus, they just start Q bidding immediately. If opener skips the transfer suit, then even if opener has bid their second suit, they have to confirm that that is their second suit. So whether it is or not, they bid their second suit at the cheapest possible level and now opener will start Q bidding. Any questions? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Right, we do need to deal with uh, interference. Okay, so there's various various things here. The first one is uh, if there's interference immediately over the two diamond opening. In other words, before responder has had the chance to bid anything. Okay, so. Uh, if responder was intending to bid two hearts or if they've got any of the naught to four hands including a single suited hand responder can simply pass and this gives opener the maximum amount of room to bid typically opener is going to double or redouble with a shortage in whatever suit that they've bid or redouble if ops have doubled and they've got a singleton diamond. If they if ops have bid one of their suits and they've got a lower range, they will typically pass a bid by opener, as I've said there implies a four card holding an op suit but they've got a an upper range 20 to 23 point hand in other words they're not prepared to go quietly um, they don't have the option of doubling because that would show a singleton in the suit that ops have bid so if they bid they've got a four card holding there so it's perfectly okay for responder to start doubling for penalties if ops persist in bidding their suit because they know that Opener's got a four card holding there. Okay, so if opener, for example, doubles to show a singleton, um, the, the distribution is an open book. So even if responders fairly weak, um, they should try and keep the bidding open if they can, uh, especially if we know we've got a decent fit. 
if openers bid rather than doubling, um, then we, we tend to just bid suits upwards until we find a fit. Uh, but again, responder knowing that openers probably 20 to 23 should try and keep the bidding open if possible. Okay, so normally with, with a weakish hand, responder's going to pass. However, there are some hands that would bid the two heart relay where we can afford to compete. And the first two, or in fact, all three of them are shown there. If we're five to seven points with a four, four, or better two suited hand, we know we've got a fit somewhere so we can afford to start competing. If we're eight plus balanced, we can afford to start uh, getting into the mix here because we've got at least 24 points between our two hands. And so we want to, we want to get into the bidding here. We're not necessarily sure that we're going to have a fit anywhere like we would with two suited hand, but we're too strong just to go quietly here. And we might be 10 plus with any hand even perhaps a single suited hand where we may not have a fit but we have got definitely got game values between our two hands if we're 10 plus so now we would double or redouble over the interference and this simply shows that we've got one of these hands and we want to compete and typically, we, we just start bidding suits upwards here until we find a fit or somebody bids no trumps um, or exceptionally, even if, uh, I mean, I've got a hand here which will show the sort of thing I mean. So West here doesn't know exactly what East has got, just that East wants to compete. Oops, sorry. Forget that alert. So what's uh, East to do here? If West has got a singleton spade and they've got 16 points between uh, hearts, clubs and diamonds, it's quite difficult to construct a hand where they don't have um, the sort of points that they do have. So personally, I think I would be bidding, you could bid five spades here as an invitation, but we know that Wes has got a singleton, so there's not a huge amount of point, but you could bid five spades as an invitation based solely on points and controls.
Or alternatively, East might just say, the hell with it, I'm going to bid six spades and take a chance on the hearts um, and the ace of clubs. And in fact, you're going to make seven because the queen of spades is coming down, but you can't be sure of that. Okay, so I mean, that's a, an example of a competitive hand where we've ended up, um, East is just ending up forcing play in West's known singleton suit. Um, and clearly they must have at least a seven card suit that's nearly solid, if not solid, to bid that. Okay, so that's interference immediately over. Um, the two diamond bid. If, um, sorry, I've just realized there's one thing that I haven't mentioned there. If responder is 14 plus with a two suitor, they just transfer into their suit as before. They, in other words, we effectively ignore the interference. It may affect which suit we end up transferring into, but we still just transfer into it. So a pass shows a hand that would normally have bid two hearts or has one of the naught to four types. Double or redouble shows a hand that wants to compete, but any hand that bids something is a 14 plus two suitor, and it's a transfer as before. I better just put that in the notes, just bear with me a second. Sorry, that's out of uh, out of order with the comment above. Okay, so now we're going to switch to uh, responders made the two heart relay and then uh, ops have bid something. So typically, we're going to end up bidding exactly the same as opener. Um, in other words. Uh, where opener is going to bid the same if respond, as if responder had passed. If it had gone two diamonds and then interference, pass, pass, back to opener. Um, so we're going to double or redouble with a singleton in op suit. They're going to pass with 16 to 19 and a four card holding in op suit and if they bid then that's a suit with a four card holding in op suit but we're going to be almost certainly up a range 20 to 23. The difference here is that when it's opener's right hand opponent who's made the interference over the two heart relay Responder is going to have another chance to bid. So it's much more common 
for opener to pass when they've got a four card holding an op suit rather than risk them coming in even if they've got 20 to 23 they've got the option of bidding but it's much more common for them to pass um, because uh, responders going to have another bid whereas if it's gone two diamonds interference pass pass responder isn't going to have another part another bid so uh, it's more difficult for opener to pass if they've got 20 to 23 okay so that deals with interference over the two heart relay if that's what responder bids okay so if responder bids two spades to show a not to four single suited hand with any suit it's not necessarily going to be in spades then this is what opener does if ops double two spades opener passes with a singleton spade and redoubles with four card spades responder passes bids their suit depending on what they've got and what opener has done so if they've got spades then probably they're gonna pass whatever hands if they've got a different suit then really it doesn't matter uh, what opener's done, they're just going to bid it. I suppose if opener's redoubled and they've got three card spades, there might be a... you might have an option of passing, but it's a bit speculative, especially if ops have doubled two spades, because it's either going to be with spade length or for takeout. In other words, spade shortage. So maybe playing an Emoisian 4 3 fits not indicated. So normally, um, whatever opener does, uh, responder is likely to pass with spades or bid their suit if they don't have spades. Okay, if ops bid rather than doubling over two spades, then it's um, slightly different in the sense that opener passes if they've got a four card holding in that of the interference, but they double if they've got a singleton in ops suit. Uh, responder will normally uh, pass if they've got a different suit if opener passes because we know that opener's got a four card holding in their suit and possibly a singleton in our suit so if we're naught to four the urge to get involved is less we might miss out on a ten card fit here but um, when opener's got a four card holding in their suit there are greater chances that they've got a singleton in our suit however if opener doubles to show a singleton in their suit um, obviously responder might have a six card holding in op suit in which case we're going to pass like a shot for penalties but if our six card suit is elsewhere we're just going to bid it at whatever level we think fit given that we know that opener's got a singleton in their suit and a four card holding in our suit any questions over the two spade response I don't think I've got an example of that I'm afraid
Um, just bear with me, I'm looking through the hands I've got prepared here. No, I don't have an example of interference over two spades, I'm sorry. Um, but it's fairly intuitive that... Uh, So it's slightly different if uh, ops double than if they bid. If they double two spades, opener passes with a singleton spade and redoubles with four card spades. Um, if they bid something though, opener passes if they've got a four card holding in op suit and doubles if they've got a singleton there. Okay, moving on. Okay, so if we get if if responder bids one of the two way transfers. then this is what opener does initially. If they've got a singleton in the transfer suit, opener will always pass. If they've got a four card holding in the transfer suit, then if they've got, and the, the ranges are slightly different here, if they've got 16 to 21 high card points, in other words, lower or mid range, then they bid the transfer suit at the minimum level. And it's only if they've got 22 to 23 high card points and a four card holding, then opener doubles or redoubles, depending on what ops have done. So the, the ranges are, are slightly skewed here because we have to bear in mind that opener might be, sorry, responder might be naught to four high card points. And so we want to encourage them if we double or redouble, um, even if they are naught to four rather than 14 plus. So with 16 to 21 and a four card holding, opener bids the transfer suit. With 22 or 23, they double or redouble, depending on what ops have done. If they've got a singleton in the transfer suit, opener always passes. And that then leaves um, the ball totally in responder's court. If responder's naught to four, they're just going to pass. Um, unless they've got a 4-4 two-suiter, in which case with four high card points, they've got the option of competing in their second suit because we know we've got a fit there. Okay, any questions so far? So that's initial actions by opener. Okay, so the next thing is if opener passed over the interference, whatever it was, i.e. showing a singleton in the transfer suit, with 0-4 they'll normally pass, but if, as I've said there, if the interference was a double, then they simply bid the next suit up. It's too dangerous to pass when we know that we've got a fit in the next suit up. Even if it's a 4-3 fit, it's better than a 4-1 fit. Okay, so if opener passed over the interference, we know they've got a singleton in their second suit with 14 plus. However, 
they bid their second suit as an eater ask or just as a natural forcing bid if we're not playing asking bids. Now this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated. If responder, if opener passes over the interference, a double by responder is eater in the suit below that of the interference because otherwise that's going to be a fairly expensive bid and they bid three no trumps if ops have bid their second suit however if ops doubled the transfer bid and open a past to show a singleton in the transfer suit then now a redouble is in is eta in the next suit up and that it has to be the next suit up because responders going to bid the next suit up if they got naught to four when ops have doubled the transfer bid I can't explain that any more clearly really if ops bid then the double by responder is asking in the suit below that of the interference but if ops double then the redouble is either in the next suit up because otherwise responder has no means of without an, a very expensive bid and no means of asking in the next suit up because if they bid the next suit up they're showing naught to four high card points is everybody with me so far any questions so that all of that is only all of that is only if opener passed over the interference showing a singleton in the transfer suit Okay, so the, all right. So the next one, and this is where I was having my senior moment before, is because I was getting confused with this situation. If opener bids the transfer suit, in other words, they've got a four-card holding, so it's gone two diamonds, three clubs, um, uh. Transfer to diamonds and ops come in with say three spades. If opener bids four diamonds, in other words, now we've got a four card holding in diamonds, but we're only 16 to 21 high card points because we would have doubled or redoubled if we had 22 to 23, then responders normally going to pass with 0 to 4. But they obviously can compete in the transfer suit at the four level if space permits. Because we're naught to four, we know that um, opener is 16 to 21. So game's a bit dodgy, even if opener's maximum. However, if responder is 14 plus, then we treat opener's bid of the transfer suit at whatever level it has to be we treat that as gamma and we make the appropriate response but we have to skip over any four level bids of the agreed suit because a naught to four responder might bid those competitively or invitationally even Now I don't have a hand to explain this, but um, it, it is explained in full this on the notes on the website. But uh, just for the sake of example, supposing it goes two diamonds, pass by ops, three clubs transfer to diamonds, 
interference of three spades and now um, opener bids four diamonds okay in this instance there aren't any four level bids of diamonds that are possible um, but if responder is 14 plus they're going to treat four diamonds as gamma in diamonds and make the appropriate response um, but because potentially a naught to four hand might bid five diamonds if they if they have a particularly good naught to four hand they might have maybe six card diamonds for the sake of example um, they might bid five diamonds the gamma responses that we're going to use over four diamonds we're going to ignore the five diamond bid okay in this instance normally we would only skip over the four level bids of diamonds but because that isn't possible we're going to skip over the five level bids um, instead so in other words over four diamonds four hearts would show four card diamonds uh, or sorry four four hearts would show no top honor whatever length of diamonds we had four spades would show one top honor with four card length four no chumps would show two or three top honors with four card length five clubs would show five card length with one top honor five diamonds we skip over because that would be a naught to four response so now five hearts would be five card diamonds with two top honors five spades would be five card hearts with three top honors okay um, so that's how this works if if a four level if a response at the four level a gamma response at the four level in the agreed suit is possible then we skip over that but we wouldn't in those circumstances we wouldn't skip over a five level response because the most that that a naught to four responder will do is to invite or bid bid one more they wouldn't jump to the five level if they could bid the four level whether it's a major or a minor but if there's no possible gamma response that's going to bid the four level of the agreed suit i.e. openers bid four diamonds here to ask in diamonds now we'd skip over the five level in, instead because a naught to four responder might bid five diamonds is everybody with with me in, in the basic way that that works okay okay so if opener doubles or redoubles over the interference then they are showing four cards in the transfer suit but now they're showing 22 to 23 high card points so with naught to four responders gonna bid the transfer suit at whatever level seems appropriate and that might be the four level it might be the five level if it's a minor wouldn't normally go looking for a slam here but um, so there might be the four level in a major or a minor or the five level even in a minor so with 14 plus responder treats that double or redouble as a gamma response as a gamma 
ask in the transfer suit. But now they skip over any bids of the agreed trump suit at any level. And essentially we're talking about the four level or the five level here. So we simply skip over those. So you have to you have to work out how many steps to go but miss out the, the agreed suit. So any bids of those are a gamma response showing 14 plus. But if you bid the transfer suit as a gamma response, then you're showing 0 to 4 high card points, not 14 plus. So it's quite important that you get that right and don't forget it. Okay, so if we're not playing asking bids, so that's the situation now, then either way, we know when we've got a fit and we know which suit. So if, if opener bids the transfer suit or doubles or redoubles, then the transfer suit is the agreed suit. So we can start Q bidding as a fairly well uh, and, and just responder can just start Q bidding immediately whether open the doubles or redoubles or bids the transfer suit responder can just start Q bidding with 14 plus because there's no chance of there being any confusion between 0 to 4 and 14 plus Okay, there is there is a bit more on the site about, uh, and it doesn't come very often. This when the interference comes after opener has completed or denied the two-way transfer. Um, I'm not going to go through that now because it really doesn't happen very often. If ops are going to come in, it's normally immediately over the two diamond opening or immediately over. The two heart relay. In practice, though, yeah, in practice, we find that ops don't tend to interfere much over the two diamond opening. Mainly because if if they've actually analysed what the two diamond opening is is potentially showing. Knowing that open is 16 plus and that any suits are likely to be breaking badly is a pretty big disincentive to, to getting involved in the bidding. Um, sometimes we do get two diamonds and then a double showing diamonds. Um, because two diamonds is an artificial bid. Uh, but quite often ops decide to wait until uh, they know a bit more about what opener has, what range they are and where their singleton is. But very often by that point it's actually too high for them really to come in safely. Um, unless they've got a huge single suited hand. Whew, that's taken two hours. Still, Naomi is happily watching television. Can I have four victims, please? I've got some nice hands here for you to practice.
Thank you, Esther. Any more for any more? Don't be shy. Oh, definitely. Yes, I, I certainly, even if you were having a, uh, a practice tomorrow, I would not be there, John. I shall be watching Philly thrash the Patriots. Hopefully. I'd like them to win anyway. Two more, please. Don't be shy. Thank you, John. Come on, one more. Anybody will do. If you've not really got into the two, the, the new version of the two diamond opening, this is the time. I'm thinking of you, Paula. Get sat down because the way to cement it is. Uh, Can we please have a West? I don't want to have to sit myself. It's no fun for me. Because I can see all the cards and I set the hands in the first place. Come on, guys. Somebody sit. Please. Stop waiting for everybody else. All right. Okay, so North is 16 to 19 with a singleton diamond. But, but South has to decide the final contract here. Well done, Roger. So if South bids three spades here, North is just going to pass it. So if Roger wants to be in game, they've got to bid four. That's the secret. Okay, Esther, lead on.
Okay, well done, guys. Any questions on that one? Like I said, the main thing to take away is that South has to decide what level they want to play at over three clubs. If they bid three spades, there's no way North is going to disturb that. So if South wants to be in game, they've got to bid it. Okay, so Esther's in the 16 to 19 range. So she bids two no trumps to show that she's lower range rather than 20 to 23. Okay. Oh, you're a, you're a lucky girl, Esther. A club lead is about the only lead that allows you to make this contract. <laughs> you see, you, you can't assume... I mean, I'm, the three diamonds, the two spade bid followed by three diamonds is naught to four. I don't have to have the seventh diamond. I don't have to have any points at all. And five diamonds is quite a high quite a high thing to aim at when you've got some holes in them in the black suits. It's very unlikely I've got the ace of diamonds or the ace of hearts. So that's that's two losers immediately. And I certainly can't have both black suit kings. So um any other lead and you're almost certainly going to take the spade finesse and going to go off. But, uh, okay, so I, I mean, I would have passed three diamonds. Now south probably doubles for takeout. North bids three hearts. Now East could bid four diamonds because they've got short hearts and a four card fit in diamonds and we probably play there because at this vulnerability I don't think North South could afford to uh, compete at the four level. So that's how I envisage the sequence going is a pass over three diamonds, a double from South, three hearts by North or even four hearts and now East can compete if they want. But I wouldn't voluntarily bid five 
or even four over three diamonds. Okay. Very good. Ah, oh, well, okay, that's fair enough, John. Yes. Yeah, I'd forgotten about that. <laughs> Esther's, Esther's. The bottom line is that Esther's terrified of me calling her, me calling her a wimp. <laughs> That's what it is. So here we have a here we have a two-way transfer. So north is either naught to four, or fourteen plus. Okay, so three spades simply shows a singleton heart. Again, uh, if you don't mind, guys, can uh, without without please, John. I, I don't want to confuse people with asking bids. I know it, it needs a um, a bit more mental effort from you guys not to use the asking bids. But for those, if there's anybody watching who's not into asking bids yet, it's going to confuse them if we start using them. Okay, so John has to bid four spades just to show that spades is his second suit. Because obviously South doesn't know what North's second suit is if he's got 14 plus. So now South starts the cue bidding. So, just hang on a minute, Roger. If, if s we already know that South has got a singleton heart. So, if South cubids five hearts here, they are actually showing, they are actually showing the stiff ace. Because we know they've got second round control. So, if they actually show it, then they're showing first round control. In other words, the stiff ace. Otherwise, they would just bid a rolling five spades. Mm, I would bid six clubs here. John, actually, you've already shown the diamond control. You don't know that the you don't know that the club control isn't crucial. You can do that because South's already bid five clubs, so it's useful to show. The more useful to show the club control. Roger has gone into a trance. You haven't shown your king of diamonds yet, Roger. That's a big hint.
Yeehaw! Very good guys, well done. Very good. Okay, so a nice Q bidding sequence there. But you all take the point about the five heart bid. It is a lot easier with asking bids. Um, but on the other hand, you're starting at a fairly high level. And the one thing that Q bidding is, it's very efficient on space. Uh, particularly when you get a Q bidding sequence like that. But if you got beta, you'd find out that you had all of the controls. Um, apart from the king of clubs. So you should get to seven spades anyway. Well done, guys. Excellent, eh? Yep, he did well. I'm sorry, guys, about about not allowing asking bids, but um, it's actually quite good practice, just in case you're ever mentoring somebody who who doesn't play asking bids. Um, quite good practice to get into. Absolutely right, John. Okay, so I'm not going to disturb three spades here. Um, would you like to lead, Roger? It's a fair bet, actually, when I pass three spades that I've probably got a singleton spade. Which may affect what South decides to lead. But, um... At least that allows him a, a view of what suit he may want to attack next. Okay, well done, Esther. Any questions? So if I had four card spades, I'd probably give bid four spades regardless. Um, with a ten card fit, uh, we'd be very unlucky uh, not to make ten tricks. But when I've only got a singleton spade, it's not worth it.
Are you with us, Roger? All right. Okay, so North's got a singleton diamond. So now, Roger, you just need to show your second suit. So this time, North starts the cue bidding. We know he's got a singleton diamond, so he can ignore showing a control there, given that he hasn't got the stiff ace. Okay, so that's fairly illustrative, that four spade bid. We can be fairly certain that South has got a spade shortage. I would bid 4N here, John. I think. Now, I, I mean, if you're, you know, you could play that as, as Roman key card. If you were using asking bids, um, it would be just a, a more encouraging bid than five clubs. I mean, technically, five clubs would be rolling here, but four no trumps is definitely um, more encouraging. But playing it as Roman key card at this stage of the game is probably the better the, the better option. I don't know. We know South's got the two minor suit aces. We know they've got a spade shortage. So they must have at least six points. I might have asked for kings with five no trumps here, John. Anyway, it's my lead. We have a claim. I do have a couple of comments about the bidding. Um, not the Q bidding and stuff, but the earlier thing. Would you just like to claim, Roger? Um, okay. I guess, yeah. 
Well, no, I mean, hearts is a worry. John, you don't know that South has got, you know, you've got that duplication in spades. You don't know that he's got the King of Hearts or the Queen of Hearts. If he's got that in diamonds, six may well be the limit of the hand. It's not black and white, but I think five no trumps at least confirms he's got one of the kings. Um, or both. But what I was going to say is that Roger transferred to diamonds. Over two diamonds, he bid three clubs transferring into diamonds. Um, personally, I would have transferred into... There's no reason not to transfer into clubs here. So two diamonds, two no trumps is a transfer to clubs. Now north bids three clubs and south starts the queue bidding and we're a whole level of bidding earlier and now we do get to find out about the king of hearts. There's no reason here for south to transfer into his shorter suit which is more expensive rather than his longest suit which is cheaper do you get my point Roger 2n is a transfer to clubs yes 2n three clubs three diamonds and three hearts are all transfers Two, two hearts is the relay, two spades is the 0-4 single suited hand and all the rest are two way transfers So, and that includes two no trumps ok right very good and the next I'll keep on supplying these hands. I've got another six yet, after more seven. Um, Name is still quite happily watching television with her mum. Okay, Rog. Thanks for sitting. But given that uh, we're all going to be watching the Super Bowl tomorrow, by the look of it, um, and John's not got to practice. Um, be nice to get a few hands under our belt today. Are you sure about that, Esther? <laughs> Much better. Okay, so East is 20 to 23 here. Um, and I know Park's got a singleton heart. And I also know, therefore, that we're playing with a 30-point deck. Because I've got no wastage in hearts. Um, but my options are limited here because I've used the two-heart relay. So my only option, really, here is... Um, So we're not playing asking bids, so this is just normal Blackwood because we can't play Roman key card because East doesn't know what suit I'm going to be agreeing. So we can't use the King of Trumps as a key card. So this is just asking for aces. So four clubs here is showing two aces. 
Um, so I can be, I'm fairly good here, assuming that partner's just got a small singleton in hearts and that we're missing the ace of hearts. Um, giving nor sorry, giving east 20 to 23 points split between the remaining suits. It's very difficult to come up with a hand where we don't have almost everything in those suits. So I pretty much here have to just bid this. Again, whether I use ace asking or beta or not, I have to decide the final contract here. Yeah, I can't leave it up to East because if I bid five clubs, they're going to pass. Okay, Roger, far away. Well done, Esther. So if you don't take anything else away, just remember this, that if uh, Responder uses that two-heart relay, they end up in total control of what level we play at. Unless they make a bid that's obviously invitational, like a five-level bid, a jump to a five-level bid in a major. That would be obviously invitational, and now Opener has some option to pass or bid on. But otherwise, Responder is always deciding. Can we have a South, somebody? Please? All right, maybe we've had enough. We've been going for two and a half hours. Maybe let's call it a night. So we start on the asking bids next week. Take care now.